So my last ice cream sandwich. I figure, you know what, let's do it before it gets too cold out. I open the window and I turned a fan on because it's been a little warm. Not too bad, but a little bit. Um... Oh, Cheryl, that's the other dude. is a burden we will camp chill i'm merely eating like cronk shaft i'm hungry what's a cronk shaft <laughs> Okay, so we gotta get down to here. Oh, we can check this first, so. Oh, I didn't hit start on this. Whoops. Okay, so let's go down to here. We'll probably stop at this on the way. Two, three. I've had four. Can you guys guess what I'm going to do? Always oh, my fire, exactly. If anybody ever tries to say that there's too much, there's such a thing as too much fire. They're wrong. Oh god. I grant you death. Where I 
punch. Wow. Knock knock just made him go boom. Bring it. Okay, I'm gonna do another fireball. people <gasps> there's people down there oh that's not fair cannot hide from me yes oh I was hoping that one would be just in range fuck yeah make you know what I might make instead of that no this cake is essentially just a brownie with chocolate fudge sauce I don't know I'll either make that cake I was talking about Mux or I'm gonna make brownies brownies could be good oh I could do brownies with like a mint a mint chocolate icing I could do brownies with like mint chocolate icing Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make brownies with mint chocolate icing next weekend. I want to make my cookies at some point too, so I might make my cookies again soon. But I gotta get chocolate for those. I might go to. I might get um. Like, you can get, like, these massive bags of chocolate chips, like this, at Costco. I might get some of those next time I go. And then I'll make some of my cookies. Enter the Shivering Glade. But yeah, I might make brownies next weekend, though. Because I gotta go shopping, because I need flour for other stuff, so... Green room. Trail me. Blue room. Open that fight back. Best kind of fight. Tear them apart! 
Well, good thing I bought a shit ton of those resto scrolls. enemies on fire first. Ah. They go down! One down. Okay, good. Not a lot of damage, but at least there's some. I need to get Kitty out of there. I gotta get her out of there. really excited to do some baking now. It's been a while since I've done any. Taste my beauty. Come here, Bax. Not that statue. Yeah! Bring it! I love baking, but it's been so long since I've done any. There we 
go. Come on. Nowhere to run. Yes, die. This is going to hurt. Which knife to use? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Oh, what is this? A clockwork pendant. This pendant grants its wearer a plus 10 bonus to movement speed. Slow and haste spells cast by the wearer have their duration increased by a half by a half as if expected Affected by an extend spell feat. I don't think I really have anybody that has any slow, but... Okay, that actually does give him more armor, so that's good. Um, oh, I'm gonna give it to her. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all that's here. Probably just to get that. I'm just kind of excited to bake now, Mux. I'm gonna do some baking. It's time to pull off the masks and answer for your deeds. My master has seen enough, so he summons you. Come, kneel before this land's true ruler. Embrace suffering, embrace pain. Surrender your spirit to Vordekai, the chosen of the four horsemen and the keeper of the Oculus of Abaddon. What do you mean by seen enough? I'm the eyes and the ears of my master. Everything I see or hear, he sees and hears as well. All we speak of, all your deeds, nothing escapes my master. I like how the feet have clipped through the stone, and so they look blue because they're behind the topography. Chosen of who again? The four horsemen of the apocalypse. The rulers, <laughs> arch demons, harbingers of death and destruction. The greatest, the horsemen of death, Charon. 
deemed Bordecai worthy and granted him a gift. The Oculus of Abaddon. I'm not afraid. Where is he? Go to the Valley of the Dead. Pass the That's gates where I was going. and face the challenges that await. If you survive, my master will meet you in his sanctuary. What's in the Valley of the Dead? The gates bar the entrance to the Valley of the Dead. Only the one who has the key or sacred knowledge can pass. Once my master barred the valleys from the outer world and the lesser races such as Skunk yours. bees? <laughs> Thus my master could focus upon his research and rule the empire without the pathetic rebellions and petty wars of your kind. Bumble skunks. <gasps> Bumble skunks! Find three incense burners hidden in the tombs of traitors who imprisoned my master in his sanctuary, or conjure darkness, which is able to open the way to the Valley of the Dead. This way or another, you will be able to pass the gates, and my master will seal your fate. He truly wants to meet me, and then he comes to me. When my master comes, there will be nothing left of you. Bumble or skunk. Your <laughs> no trace yes. of the lesser races. Only servants of Vordekai. The skies shall be storms. The rivers shall run red. It will be the empire of Vordekai restored. Glorious and pure. The raven spoke of the Oculus of Abaddon, a mysterious artifact that can grant immense magical power. Perhaps Vordecai's sanctuary will have answers. That mysterious raven that's been following the Baroness since Varnhold has delivered a message from Vordecai. The annihilator of that unfortunate town wishes to meet with us personally. Egg. Time. Who's this? Wait. We need to talk. Tristan, what are you doing here? Forgive me, Baroness. I hope that when I explain, you'll accept my apology. I couldn't let you go alone. What happened? The Valley of the Dead the Raven spoke of. I know it. An ancient evil is buried there, from empires since turned to dust. Being cautious is not enough. If you go there, you must tread quietly, or you shall awaken dark things indeed. A tomb lies in the heart of the valley. That is where the evil sleeps. I know I cannot sway you from going, but if you must go, please let me help you. My faith may help. When spells and steel may not. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll take him instead of Lindsay. Just because we're not gonna take we're not gonna take Lindsay if we're taking Tristan. We only need one support.
Okay, we're gonna camp first. And let's see if I can make anything good. Plus to damage rolls, let's do that. Have you ever thought of leaving the warrior's path? Finding a new task? Putting away your sword? Putting away? <laughs> yeah, right. It would get stolen right away. And it's pretty valuable. All right. Yes. Let's do it. There are faint inscriptions on the stone surface worn away by time and weather. Yellowed ancient bones lie scattered among the sparse grass and shale. Forwards. No, backwards. Backwards. I'm good at this. There are tracks in the dirt. Numerous people on foot pass through the gates into the valley beyond not long ago. gate blocks your path. The pillars flanking the gate are carved from the mountain itself, and both the gate and pillar rise so high they are obscured by the mists above. The gate is sealed, but you see no lock, not even a handle. Study the gate. The gates are covered with ancient inscriptions and disturbing depictions of worship and sacrifice. But the inscriptions are far above eye level, so much so you have to take a few steps back to see them. In the center, where the two gates meet, there's a circular protrusion. Set into it are three black hooks. Try to translate the inscriptions. Success, yes! Many of the words are lost to time and weather, but you make out some glyphs and symbols you recognize. And from there, manage to piece together the inscription. In darkness, the doors open. In murk, the truth reveals itself. In gloom, death steps into the halls. Uh, attempt to decipher the image. Success. Depicted on the gates are three cyclops. Great giants clad in ceremonial garb. They stand before an Im image of the gate, which is open. Each Cyclops is holding aloft a lantern that looks to be a Cyclops skull. Examine the circular protrusion. Your initial idea that some ancient lock lay in the center of the gate proves wrong. The gate is sealed. The gate is sealed. A solid wall with neither lock nor latch nor keyhole. Perhaps the gate was not meant to be open. It was meant to seal something inside. Study the hooks. The gate seems built for giants and their kin, but yet three small hooks are set in a circular protrusion in the gate, five feet off the ground. If this gate was meant for giants, it is odd they set the hooks so low. Peering closer, you see the hooks bear traces of soot and ash. Examine the pillars. Massive pillars rise high up into the mist. You can barely imagine the power it would take to build this gigantic structure. A mere touch of my master's power. He commands armies, slaves, servants, shapes mountains to his will. This 
is a monument to his reign. And his reign will come again. Oh, I don't like this place. I feel like it, I did in Kadira uh, during our raids on daemon worshippers. It's a very similar atmosphere. Examine the left pillar. This pillar stands on the windward side, so it is more weathered than the rest of the gate. You can faintly make out the remains of inscriptions that once used to cover the pillar, but they are so faded by wind and the elements as to be unreadable. Okay, the right pillar. Time and weather have failed to destroy the bas relief that rises from the foot of this pillar and winds its way up into the mist. The pillar is covered with intricate geometric patterns, images of lotuses and other flowers, mysterious figures performing strange rituals. The attention to detail is amazing. You'd need hours to examine every image. What kind of annoys me is that what they're describing isn't what we see. And it's like, what, wh why? Why not? If you're going to model something, why not model what's actually supposed to be there? You know? Like, I get why it cuts off. The idea would be that it would ex keep extending upwards. But, like, I don't know. Why not model what's actually there? Light the three incense burners from the tombs and hang them on the hooks in the, on the center of the gate. Clouds of smoke billow from the lit incense burners, streaming out through the Cyclops' eye sockets. You quickly realize the smoke isn't rising, it's encircling you, engulfing you, until all around you is darkness. You have overcome the gate. Now go to the Valley of the Dead. Go and meet your fate. Is what the raven says as he flies off. Lord of guys to um Is it gonna be the crow again? <clears throat> Harbinger, Giant Bane Earthbreaker. Plus three insight bonus to AC against the undead's attacks. Okay, yeah, she's definitely got to equip that. We'll do that instead of this. Here I am. Tablets covered with the text in an ancient language. It looks like some strange 
Uh, it looks like some strange list. I should actually change his spells up. See if I can change his spells up to give him some better, better stuff. Aim true. I guess I can make her go forward. Pew, pew, pew! Knock, knock, used to lighting enemies on fire first. Well, that worked out well. I grant you dead. Strange list. I'm glad to help. The tablet is covered with the names of dead cyclopses buried in the Valley of the Dead. The list ends with a statement: "May the Vorticai's army rest in peace and ashes until it rises on his demand." Breaking it. It is done. Thousands of thousands are buried at the feet of Vordekai. Thousands of thousands will embrace the darkness and rise at Master's call. Come on, for fuck's sakes, let me read. Thousands of thousands will start a new age in glory of the four horsemen. It's like some things in this are way too slow and some things are way too fucking fast. from me. my name onto 
to your flesh. Nowhere to run. Dagdent. I'm glad to help. The list of clans and families has seen better days. Someone cracked a tablet and scraped off carved names. You notice a word written over the neat lines. It reads, traitor. I'm glad to help. The master of death will call out those who are buried under his feet. Those who rejected Vordecai will become servants to him. Great Vordecai will unite sworn enemies with a common af afterlife goal, implementing his will. What's in wait for me there, I wonder? Okay. Looks like that's it. I'm gonna camp before we go in. Everyone says brains aren't important for a lass. They're right. A woman needs a bicep, <laughs> that's right. A whack in the face will make anyone respect. That's right. All right, I'm coming for you, Vordecai. Trail me. This dead man's face is frozen in terror. This corpse lies in an unnatural position, his back arched, his fingers clutching his throat. For you? A subtle sickening smell is rising from the holes in the floor. The raven's gleeful cause echoes off the walls. You came, Asmar. Past the ancient ga gate, through the valley of the dead, you struck down all who stood in your path. Despite the danger awaiting you, you still came. My master knew you'd be a worthy servant. One more step, Asimar. The sanctuary of my master lies beyond. Accept your fate without fear, and Vordecai will be merciful. But remember, once you open the door before you, there's no turning back. I'm ready. Go forth, Asimar. May your death be intertwined with the ecstasy of suffering never ending. Doesn't sound so happy to me.
You see that? Okay, if there's anything else. Oh God. Gotta get everybody out of the smoke. I believe I found something. Ah, good, you dead. No strike wasted. Whoa! A hit of fifty one. That's freaking badass. There we go. You forced my hand. Cannot hide from me. There we go. You can tell, Bear, there's bodies. I did it. I did. I like what I see. Why do you like traps? Shall we move? We I shall move without breaking it. That. I don't know why that's doing that. That's weird. I did it. I did. <laughs> Let's <laughs> shred them. No 
nowhere to run. Do they have like a vulnerability to anything? I can't tell. Damn it. I'll try to make this swift. I aim true. So it's come to this. I grant you death. Hits. I like it. Okay, I did want to check something though. Um, I need to check Tristian's spell book. Put bless on there again. What's this? That could actually not be bad. Controlled fireball, for sure. Do a summons. Uh, uh, do that.
I'm gonna have to rest, but... I see how you care about your wolf. This is very noble and merciful. See if we can get, uh... Take care of each other. That's how it is in a stuff done. It's nothing to do with nobleness. Confide in me. I don't have a lot, but we've got a fair amount. Here, my friend. Be on guard. Cannot hide from me. You down better ones. I should use this. What treat you, fool? That's more hydrogen than I thought there was. Flames take you. Nowhere to run. so bad. Really? It didn't even get a chance to attack me? Okay. Must be slow as fuck. I'm already gonna eat the Hydra.
Bones and fish scales are scattered across the floor. Underwater stairs. Done. Black and white geometric patterns adorn the ceramic vase. The amphora is decorated with paintings of white lotuses. This jar depicts Cyclops is engaged in a competition, running a race from the looks of it. The surface of this pot depicts a Cyclops studying a pile of books and a manuscript. So it's like they weren't all, like, evil. And we'll find him full of surprises. So good and so self <laughs> But where is the confidence behind this show of courage? Ah. <sighs> Do you fear to be shamed in the eyes of your accomplices? Which of your band do you fear to disappoint? I have no times for your taunts and riddles. I never deny my enemies the right to know my name. I'll remember your name. They keep giving me this tip about how there's a monster that is more dangerous when it knows your name. Oh, I should have used her to throw a fireball. That would have been better. Cannot hide from me. This is going to hurt. Turn. That's bullshit. Nowhere to run. Like, I don't know if that's a bug or what, but like, I don't know why some people sometimes don't like skip their turn for no reason. It ha it's happened more than once. That's why I don't know if it's like what the rule is that determines it or if it's genuinely a bug. Try to make this swift. Not not used to lighting enemies on fire first. What are you doing, Penguin? True. 
We wanna, Thank you. I don't want to bring her any closer to them because then she might so get come to this. hit. Be easier what are you doing, I Penguin? See that? See, I thought that there would be another one there. I did it. I did. Step, step, step. There are several barely visible hatches on the ceiling. I'm not mad enough to do it. On this bas relief, a cyclops clad in ceremonial room robes raises a luminous sphere aloft. At his feet crawl numerous people who kneel or prostrate themselves before him. I'm listening. Let's go. After trekking through the gloomy dungeon, we finally arrive at a heavy stone door, decorated with lots of fancy carvings. As soon as we touch it, though, we heard a click from within the wall, followed by a suspicious noise above our heads. A heartbeat later, before we even had a chance to guess what was happening, some rusty hatches opened above our heads, and murky water from the river began flooding the room. The room rap filled rapidly, threatening to trap us in a watery grave. Along with the water, sand and mud from the riverbed poured in, as well as some of the underwater plants and some scared fish that weren't fast enough to escape. Aw, poor fishies. It can be hard to keep your cool in a situation like this, but while some of us are praying to their gods or complaining about not having the time to finish Golarion's next great novel, the others try to... Open the door. Yes! Penguin, what are we doing? Come here. Come here. The ancient architects of this place clearly weren't expecting their ancestors to just try prying the door open while standing knee deep in murky water. But our heroes did just that and succeeded. With the door open, our group rushed out of the room, closing the door tightly behind them to cut off the water. 
After several minutes, the noise behind the door stopped. Maybe the prehistoric pipes got clogged with mud, or maybe the trap just shut itself off. Either way, we waited for the water to drain out through the cracks in the floor before looking back into the gloomy room that almost spelled our doom. That's where we found the remains of someone who hadn't been as lucky as we had. We had. As the water had sucked in mud and fish from the river, it had also pulled in the twisted skeleton of some drowned adventurer. Still clad in tattered traveler's clothes, the poor soul didn't have anything in their pockets to hint at who they might have been or where they came from. But we did find a pouch of coins. After one or more look at that scary place, our group carefully moved on, advancing further into the depths of the sepulchre. 